Hi, I'm Emmett Reed, Executive Director of the Florida Healthcare Association. Welcome to another edition of FHCA's Provider Program. This is a Tallahassee update from the Florida Healthcare Association. This was a light week for legislators, as the Senate is on break for the religious holidays, while the House was in town for just two days. Here's an update on health care bills we've been tracking. House Bill 119 by Representative Matt Hudson contains important provisions that would eliminate some duplicative forms and processes for nursing homes, while at the same time giving regulators more time to spend on meaningful reviews of provider services. Uh, this bill will <coughs> streamline regulations for 29 different provider types. Uh, it will eliminate duplicative um, licensure provisions and uh, reporting provisions. It will also eliminate a number of obsolete provisions. It will uh, basically eliminate a tremendous amount of red tape. This week, the bill passed out of its last committee of reference, Health and Human Services, which is good news for members. Another bill we're watching is House Bill 311 by Representative Ken Roberson, which helps clarify how cities should apply occupational taxes to persons who are employees of businesses that already pay the tax. This is an important issue for nursing homes, who certified nursing assistants, for example, could be subject to such a tax at the local level without this exemption, thus negatively impacting their ability to work and the facility's ability to maintain an adequate workforce. The bill is making good committee progress, and I had the chance to catch up with Representative Roberson to talk about this important issue. All right, I'm at the Capitol in Representative Ken Roberson's office, and uh, Representative Roberson, you have been a champion. Last year, you, you helped carry the FHCA regulatory uh, the bill, and we certainly appreciate that. You've been a champion for the elderly and for FHCA, and this year is no exception. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, House Bill 311 that you're sponsoring and, and uh, the effects, the, that, the profound effects that it may have uh, on the healthcare profession in general. Right. Thank you. Uh, well, House Bill 311 came about in the fall of uh, 2010. The uh, city of Punta Gorda requested an attorney general's opinion on who actually had to pay the business tax. And surprisingly, this uh, attorney general opinion came back that said anybody who had any kind of state license, registration, certification had to pay the tax. And it really has a significant impact on anybody who's licensed in the state of Florida. Florida. Uh, nurses, certified nursing assistants, uh, just on and on. So it has uh, big consequences. And uh, of course, the local business tax years ago was known as the occupational uh, license. Uh, and then it got changed to what it really is. It's a tax. It's a tax for the privilege of doing business. And it's always been basically on the business, the entity, the location. And this just kind of dramatically expands uh, the scope of this tax and uh, it's to my, my mind it's double taxation and we need to fix it. Well, Representative well, Roberson on behalf of the frail and elderly and the CNAs and the nurses and everybody we certainly appreciate your support on House Bill 311. Glad to do it. I come from Charlotte County uh, which has the highest uh, elderly population in the state and uh, I'm proud to serve. Throughout the session we've had hundreds of long-term care employees with us at the Capitol meeting with lawmakers about the need to preserve nursing home funding ensure long-term care protections in Medicaid reform, and support tort reform to protect those precious Medicaid dollars. We've said before that your active involvement in the legislative process is critical to the success of our legislative agenda. Legislators are quick to tell us about the importance of hearing from their constituents back home, and your ability to bring the message about the important work you do in caring for our state's elders makes an impact. Christina Newell, Activity Director and CNA with Brynwood Center in Monticello, took time to share her perspective about working in long-term care. Um, it's very important for us to be here and represent our facility and the profession that we do. We love to take care of people. We are the ones that give care to the people. And it's very hard when people come in and want to bring lawsuits against our facilities um, to the nursing homes because then it hurts our, our morale. The employee morale goes down. Um, people start getting a little scared to do their job, always thinking that there might be a lawsuit in the back of their mind, you know, what we come to work and face every day. So it's important to come here and express that we really do enjoy and love and take care of our residents. Important nursing home tort reform will be up in committee again next week, so we appreciate your help in advance with contacting those House and Senate committee members and asking them to vote yes on House Bill 661 and Senate Bill 1396. 
Next week, we also expect legislators to begin conferencing on the budget. The House and Senate differ on their respective budgets, and as they pertain to nursing homes, the House contains a $202 million funding cut, while the Senate contains a $144 million cut. FHCA will continue pressing lawmakers about the impact these cuts would have on quality care for your residents, as well as the jobs of your frontline workers. We'll be mobilizing more grassroots to ask your help with contacting the budget conferees, so stay tuned. Just two weeks remain until the 2011 legislative session draws to a close. So remember to keep following our Capital Connection legislative blog for updates on the budget, as well as other legislative priorities. Until next time, I'm Emmett Reed, keeping you informed about the critical issues that impact long-term care and the providers we represent.